So many of us seem to be uncomfortable talking about sex. We're uncomfortable about some other things, you know, like death and money, uh, other little things that we are uh, uncomfortable talking about. But sex is one of those things that I think we've learned to be uncomfortable about. Think about young children who have questions around sex and are right out there asking those questions and they're not uncomfortable about it until someone shames them or tells them, mm, we don't talk about those things. Today, we're gonna talk about what we can do to become comfortable talking about sex. We are the sexagenarian sages. And we are here to bust the myths of sex and aging. And I am one of those people who had to learn to become comfortable about sex. I grew up in a fairly conservative family where it was not something that we talked about. And I spent most of my life, I was in my 50s actually, and still finding it hard to talk to you about sex, hard to talk to my doctors about sex. I could do it if I had to, but it was just, I avoided it. I avoided it as much as possible. And here I am now on YouTube talking about sex. How did I get here? Well, part of the way I got here is I actually started going to classes where they talked about sex, where they understood consent and boundaries. And they set up a container where it was safe for me to talk about sex and to hear other people talking about sex. And over time, I gradually learned some of the skills that I needed in order to be comfortable, but just being in the environment helped me be more comfortable. Being around people who understood that it's normal to have consensual conversations about sex. Kind of a sex positive environment. They are out there. Mm -hmm. And actually, we were gonna say this later on, but I'll say it now, sex coaches are one of the ways that you can find those communities. So we actually have a free guide to talking about sex. If you join our email list, the link is down below and tell us that you'd like this free guide to talking about sex, we'll send that to you. We're gonna go through it quickly here in today's video. Um, kind of hit the high points. Yep, high, hit the high points. And one of the first high points is talk about sex outside of the bedroom. Why what? is that? What? But why would you do that? Well, when you're in the middle of a sexual encounter, it's that much harder to actually talk about it without becoming attached to the outcome, without becoming defensive. So I'm gonna demo something here. Um, do you have just a moment? Yeah. Okay. I would like to set up a time or we can do it now if there's more time for you. Nothing's wrong. I just wanna try something a little bit different in the bedroom. And I'd like to talk to you and see if it's something you're up for and see if it's something we wanna try. Is now a good time? I would say maybe take half an hour. Mm. Or we can schedule it for another time. Yeah, I don't know if I have more than about 15 minutes right now. Okay. So let's schedule it. Okay, let's do it this evening after dinner. Okay. Does that work for you? Yes. Okay. And I just want to assure you again, nothing's wrong. I just want to talk about something a little different. <laughs> now, why do you react to that? <laughs> <laughs> Even after I told you nothing was wrong. I'm modeling to the men that they don't need to do that. They don't need to be afraid because we're working out the conversation and it's being done in a way that allows for safety, consent, some vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And actually, consent is our next piece of advice getting the consent of the person you're talking to, to talk about sex. And if it's somebody that's already one of your partners and they aren't comfortable talking with you about their sex life, 
explain to them why you feel it's important to talk about. If it's someone else, someone you're interested in, and they say no, please honor that no. Exactly. What's another point that we could bring up? Uh, let's see. Take your time. Mm. Don't be in a rush. Yep. You don't have to talk about every aspect of your sex life in one sitting. And this is a conversation that should be an ongoing conversation because your lives change, your sex desire changes. It's something that you should talk about whenever it's necessary. But even in the situation where you've got something you want to talk about, don't rush through it. Take the time to really talk about what it is that you want. And that leads to another one, uh, another piece of advice. And that is to be specific about what you want. Don't assume your partner knows what you're talking about when you say, for example, I want to try anal. They may think, okay, what, what's your first thought when I say I want to try? Well, there's a pretty broad spectrum of what anal could be. Is it going to be anal penetration? Mm. Or is there something else involved? Like external anal massage. So get a little feedback from your partner to make sure that they're understanding what you're talking about and encourage them to ask questions. And as another point, one of the things that can be helpful for bringing up conversations and just for even knowing what your desires are is a sexual desire list. And this is another thing that we will send you if you sign up for our email list and request it. It lists all kinds of things that you may not even have thought of when it comes to sex. We've already mentioned anal sex. How about age play? Blindfolds? Body worship? Um, genital contact through clothing? And these are all these are all things that on this checklist you can go through and you can work out. Is this something we'd like to try? Mm -hmm. Is this something that's an absolute no? Is it a hell yes? Have you had experience with it? Do we need training? Do I want to learn more before I say yes or no? You know, <laughs> some of the things they do take training. Yep. Bondage, for instance, yep. fire play, uh, some some BDSM type activities can have some hazards involved with them and you may need extra training. And they can be totally hot when they're done right. Right. But you wanna make sure you are doing it right so that you're not putting yourself or your partner in danger. And another thing on here is, do you want to be the giver or receiver? When you say oral sex, for example, do you want oral sex performed on you? Do you wanna perform it on your partner? Makes a difference. That's where the sexual desire list can be helpful to help you remember the things to think about. What else have we got on our uh, One of the things that I wanted to hit here <clears throat> is uh, the point of knowing your erotic language. And your partner's erotic language. And your partner's erotic language. Because when you're discussing this, understanding the words that turn them on and the words that turn them off can make all the difference into how the communication goes. If things are requested in a way that turns off your partner, they're gonna be less likely to want to proceed any further mm -hmm. with those activities. Whereas if you understand their erotic language, it becomes easier to communicate in a way that has a positive connotation. You understand? Another thing. Be kind, be compassionate, and be understanding. This isn't the place to be, okay, I'm going to um, demonstrate some bad behavior. You are terrible when you go down on me. I absolutely hate it. That's really going to want to make him do something, isn't it? Blame throwing, it gives me no positive feedback. How do you, what do you want? How do you want me to proceed? It's just negative attack. And instead of approaching it something along the line of, I would like to try something different when you go down on me. 
there's a technique that I think would feel more pleasurable to me. Can feel, we talk about that? Feel how much more positive that sounds. Mm -hmm. okay. What else we got? Well, I don't want to give them Thank everything you. because we want you to request this. But an important one that, that we get our clients to use, safe words. Mm -hmm. Develop safe words in your relationship so you can use them even in conversation around sex. There may be things that suddenly become a red or something that's too hot to handle at that moment. And you need to have safe words. You need to have some way of telling your partner when this conversation is going on that I need to break. And I talked to our friend today, our kinky fairy godmother, and invited her to come on and do a show with us about safe words. Great. We're talking, we're going to set that up sort of sometime after the first of the year we'll record that. Excellent. And we'll go into depth of uh, what safe words are and when to use them. And I want to point out, it's often, safe words are often associated with BDSM. They can come in handy anytime. I went through a period where intercourse was painful for me. And safe words would have been helpful for them. Luckily, stop was sufficient at that point in time, which is what I used. But sometimes you're saying, don't stop. And they hear the stop and not the don't. Uh, a lot of people use um, colors, as you've demonstrated. So use your safe words. All right. I want to see if there's anything else in particular I want to bring up during this particular conversation. Oh, yes. Actually, I do. We talked about talking about it outside of the bedroom. But there are times when you do want to talk about it during the middle of an account. You may want more pressure, less pressure, more speed, less speed. Do so kindly. And often a single word is enough. And if a single word isn't enough, the format I like to use is it would feel even more pleasurable if X, Y, Z. It's a great phrase to use. Yep. Because isn't that really what we're about is we're learning how to share pleasure mm -hmm. with our partner, giving and receiving pleasure. That's a positive request, too. It's not, oh, I don't like that. It's what I would like. And by using something positive, it gives the other person something that they can do that is more pleasurable. Mm -hmm. It's what you really want. You don't want the negative. You want the positive. Okay. Anything else you need to say other than... If you want the entire list, sign up for our email list and request the Sexagenarian Sages Guide to Talking About Sex and our Sexual Desire List. It's a great way to start off the new year. Okay. All right. You have something you always have to say in one of these videos. Hit that subscribe button. Mm -hmm. Share this. Like it. And get in touch with us if you have questions. Drop us a comment. Send us an email. We're here to help. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching.